uh, good morning, everybody, and want to thank everybody for making the time to be here and for um, those of you who battle traffic, for battling traffic, and uh, we're all in this heat together. So we're going to get underway before it gets too, too hot here. But uh, my name is uh, Alex Padilla. I'm a state senator uh, for the 20th district, which is, uh, serves the San Fernando Valley. But uh, I'm standing here with several of my colleagues who you'll meet today on a very, very important issue. Uh, as you all have seen and heard for many months now, uh, the state has a significant budget deficit. Uh, as legislators, we're also grappling not just to balance the budget deficit, but to push back on some of the uh, harsh cuts proposed by our governor. And we can't think of uh, a more harsh and inhumane cut than cuts to health care and in-home supportive services specifically. So let me start by uh, thanking the Jewish Family Service of Los Angeles for hosting this event and allowing us to be here. Also want to thank the Personal Assistance Services Council of Los Angeles County, the California Association for Adult Day Services, the Alzheimer's Association, and specifically Derek Deweese from the Alzheimer's Association for helping organize this event. Um, as as uh, some of you know, but uh, the general public may not be as informed uh, In-home supportive services is a $266 million line item in our budget. And specifically, this program provides medical care to low-income, disabled, and aged Californians in their homes and allows them to avoid more expensive out-of-home care. This program serves nearly 400,000 Californians and has been a staple of our state's health care programs since 1959, almost 50 years. Unfortunately, the governor's proposals include a decimation of in-home supportive services. The governor's proposed cuts would cut out services to 83,000 recipients and cut the wages of our service providers. I can go on and on with statistics about what it would mean for California. It would be morally wrong, and it certainly doesn't make economic sense. But let's start today by hearing from a recipient of in-home supportive services. Uh, please welcome our first speaker, Ms. Maggie Levin, to talk about what these cuts would mean for people like her. Hi, my name is Maggie Levin. I'm a disabled person from post polio. And my life is miserable. I cannot cook for myself. I cannot take something for myself. I cannot open the refrigerator. I cannot do nothing. I cannot get up from bed. And I cannot go to bed. I need the Hoyer to lift me up and put me in a wheelchair. I need the Hoyer to take me from the wheelchair and put me in bed. I ask Governor Schwarzenegger Please, bitte, Herr Governor, don't do this for me, and don't do this for other people like me in the same situation. We are disabled and elderly. We don't have strength, and we need this program to be. Don't do it like somebody else think about us maybe you can donate a little bit money <laughs> to help us please mr schwarzenegger don't do this we need this program we need these hours and i need my caregiver without my caregiver i can do nothing i'm so dependent on her and all the time when i call her she sleeps in my bedroom, and she gets up even in the middle of the night and do something for me. Herr Schwarzenegger, please, I beg you, and I'm asking you, with all any language that you want to speak with me, I can tell you, please don't do this to us. We need this program and be with a good heart and help us to keep this program. Thank you very much, and good luck. 
Thank you very much, Maggie. We couldn't say it uh, any better ourselves. Our next speaker is Maggie's caregiver, uh, Miss Deborah Kreplin, uh, to talk about not just her commitment to Maggie, but what these cuts would mean for providers like her. Good morning. Maggie and I start every day with a nice cup of tea, but it's strictly business after that. Maggie has no use of either one of her legs. Um, she needs every basic need met. She needs somebody to bathe her and dress her on a daily basis. She needs to have three meals per day shopped for, cooked, and served. Maggie usually needs, for some reason, to go out um, three times per week for a doctor's appointment or possibly for her group meeting with some of her friends. And at that time, she does need to be lifted from her bed to the wheelchair, and we require the use of our Hoyer lift for that. Um, at the end of the day, of course, she's put back to bed. Obviously, Maggie has no use of her legs and could not do any of these things for herself. I truly, truly hope that the governor can be convinced not to cut the funding for this truly worthwhile program that will affect so many senior citizens. I love my job. I love taking care of Maggie. She needs me, and it's extremely fulfilling. But I couldn't do it without the funding, and I'd really appreciate your help. Thank you very much. Bitte, Herr Schwarzenegger. Bitte. Herr Governor Schwarzenegger, bitte, 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 tun Sie das nicht. Thank you, Maggie. Um, our next speaker is the Executive Director here at Jewish Family Services. Please welcome Paul Castro. Uh, thank you for coming today to learn about this very, very important issue. Uh, as Alex said, I'm Paul Castro, Executive Director of Jewish Family Service, and you're here in the courtyard of one of our senior centers. Uh, in addition to this, we do services all across the county, uh, like food, shelter, and other kinds of supportive services for families and individuals. You just heard Maggie give one example of how these supportive services enable people to stay in their homes and to live independently. We have thousands of clients like Maggie uh, who live in Los Angeles, and we applaud the work that Deborah does with her because it's a very important and a critical job for someone like Maggie. And you know, we do what we can to support people like Deborah in the work that they do. Here at JFS, we, uh, we serve over 30,000 older adults of all religious backgrounds and ethnicities. Uh, and we're very concerned about this proposal that, uh, to cut IHSS because it'll affect many, many of the clients that we serve. Uh, this program, as you may know, has been in place since 1959 and it forms an important and key part of the safety net that enables our clients to live independently and to have quality of life. The other thing that we want to uh, recognize is that the, the cuts in these kinds of areas represent a false economy. The dollars that they will save here in making these cuts will be spent many times over as people like Maggie and other clients end up going into higher levels of care, hospitals, nursing homes, the state will have a greater financial burden uh, and many of these clients will end up moving to these kinds of situations in the, could be as, as early as the next 30 to 90 days. Uh, these cuts will also have a disproportionate effect on the, on the poor and, and the frail and the disabled in our communities and will already further stress an over, overburden safety net and the work that many agencies like JFS and other agencies do to help people like Maggie and, and Deborah do the work that they can do. So we're, we're, uh, we're pleased that you're here today. This is a very important issue for Jewish Family Service, and we urge the, the governor and, and, of course, the legislator to find a way of making sure that a program like this really can stay intact. Thank you. Now I want to give a special thank to Paul and the entire staff here for their commitment to uh, our seniors and giving them not just the health care but the dignity that they deserve. Uh, we have several legislators here from throughout the Los Angeles area who will speak, and I want to first introduce them all and then bring them up one at a time. Beginning uh, on my right, no stranger here, uh, your assembly member and former city council member, Mike Fuhr. Give him a round of applause. 
And on down the line from the San Gabriel Valley, Assemblymember Mike Ng. And from not too far from here, Assemblymember Mike Davis. Former Assemblymember and recently elected to the State Senate, Fran Pavley. And we may have uh, one or two more join us as the program goes on. Our first speaker, though, is uh, Assemblymember Mike Ng. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator and Jewish Family Services distinguished guests and my colleagues. Last Sunday, we remembered Father's Day, but it was without my dad. My dad was a veteran of World War II and part of the greatest generation that Tom Brokaw wrote about, a generation that went to battle not for the glory but because it was the right thing to do. He unfortunately died before he, his, before he saw his son, uh, myself, Mike Ng, elected to the California State Assembly. Let me tell you about his funeral. At his funeral, the tears that his caregiver, Leilani, had for my father flowed just as freely and wholeheartedly as mine. You see, Leilani was his caregiver, a caregiver who dressed and bathed him every day, a caregiver who watched over him like a guardian angel. And many times this guardian angel would say, Mike, you can't talk to your father right now. He's taking a bath. Call back later. A guardian later angel who kept him in his final days from having to live in an expensive assisted living care facility. Now let me tell you why I'm here. In the city of Monterey Park, where my wife and I have lived for over 25 years, there are over a thousand guardian angels like Leilani, and you see one of them right here. They provide, from this area, they provide in-home supportive services for many seniors like my father. Now the governor's budget plan to cut $266 million for an in-home supportive services would be devastating to my district. Families who depend on IHSS would be forced to turn to nursing homes which would result in increased costs. Productive caregivers would be thrown into the streets with their loss of income and could themselves become dependent on state assistance, thereby negating the entire savings by these supposed cuts. Families in my district ask me, is it wise to force almost 400,000 Californians into nursing homes when we already face a severe nursing shortage? In conclusion, my father's advice to me when he knew that I was seeking elective office were Mike always help senior citizens and veterans. If he were alive today, he would be standing right here fighting mad. But don't worry, Dad. We're not going to let you down. We're going to fight these cuts. Thank you. Before bringing up the next speaker, let me uh, welcome both uh, Senator Mark Ridley Thomas and Assemblymember Dr. Ed Hernandez. Thank you for joining us. Our next speaker at this time is our host, Assemblymember, Assemblymember Mike Fuhr. Alex, thanks very much. You know, we are here in my assembly district, but the, I want to speak to you in a rather personal way uh, because there are deep roots here. Uh, I used to, as many of you know, uh, be the director of Betsetic Legal Services just down the street that provides free legal services to the same kind of population of seniors uh, that JFS provides support for. And for many years, I've been coming to this senior center and helping and looking and seeing the people here get the services that are making the difference between living a life with dignity and a life that has very little meaning. This center and centers like it are crucial. So what do we say about these cuts? Now, my grandmother relied on a caregiver in the last years of her life. And I remember that that caregiver for her was a lifeline. That's, I think, what all of us are here to talk about today, is there are some services that the state provides that connect people with each other. 
on which people rely every day and without which they won't survive. And this kind of cut is one of those cuts that will eliminate those services for so many people. So today, I join with those of us who are standing here to say, there are cuts to the budget like this one, and there are others too, that aren't even cost effective because the cost of one person going to a nursing home and relying on Medi-Cal far exceeds any cost associated with in-home supportive services. And there are cuts that will eliminate the dignity in the lives of people in our state who poll after poll show. We know that people in our state don't believe this is where the cuts ought to be made. So for moral reasons, for economic reasons, for political reasons, we stand here today to say we are united to stand for you who are here in this courtyard this morning. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mike. Our next speaker is another Mike, the Senate member, Mike Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Padilla and Assemblyman Mike uh, Fuhrer, whose district we are in, and our distinguished elected officials and special guests who are here assembled. You have heard about the importance of the $266 million that we need to invest to keep the infrastructure of California together, an infrastructure that we discovered back in 1959 was important to make sure the most vulnerable of citizens in our society are protected our seniors and our disabled. But what I think I want to make a point of today is that it is peculiar that an institution like the state of California would not value the most vulnerable in our society. How can we, in an environment where yacht taxes are hesitant for our government to cut, and yet we do not value the seniors and the disabled, and particularly the seniors who have paved the way for us to be here where we are today. It has already been pointed out by my distinguished colleagues that the $266 million investment truly is much more prudent than it would be to cut it. In fact, we will spend many more million by putting people in nursing homes than we will by keeping them in their homes through the, the reinvestment in our society. And so I stand to say to Arnold Schwarzenegger, our governor, that it is a peculiar that as an institution, that your leadership will not value the most vulnerable in our society. It has something to say about how people will look at us historically in the future. And I'll tell you, I stand with my colleagues here. We will fight to the bitter end. It is my honor to be here, and let me let you know, the work has yet to be done in our fight for the budget for this shortfall. Our next speaker is also a member of the Assembly and knows uh, health care in California better than the most. Please welcome Dr. Ed Hernandez. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, for the invitation uh, to be here in my good friend and my colleague, Assemblymember Mike Fuhrer's district. Uh, thank you. But I want to first start off with to thank all those individuals who are the IHHS workers. Those individuals, in my opinion, who are, number one, underpaid, not valued, and overworked. Give them a round of applause. It was said earlier, it is those individuals that care for the needy, the poor, the disabled, and the elderly. And yes, it's true. It is those individuals that if not given the opportunity to do so, and if those individuals that they're going to be caring for, where are they going to go? They're going to be going to a home that's going to cost the state more money than by allowing a loved one to care for them in their own home, in, con in their confines of the safety of where they feel comfortable at. So I first want to start off by thanking you, those of you care workers who give up your time 
to not only care for your loved ones, but to care for the most neediest individuals in the state of California. As we know, the caregivers serve over 396,000 Californians, and this has been a staple of the state safety net program since 1959. The governor's budget cuts reduces the wages state reimburses for IHS workers, lowers the hours they provide and eliminates, get this, 83,000 recipients. To me, that is unheard of. Not only is this a bad moral decision to turn our backs on the elderly and disabled, but it is bad economic decision as well because the, what happens, we're going to end up as a state, cutting off our nose to spite our face, thinking we're going to save money in the short run, and we're going to end up spending more money in the long run. The caregivers keep people out of nursing homes and allows families to cope with their loved ones who need some medical care and assistance. And we need to send a clear message to the governor. The elderly and the disabled should not be sacrificed. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, one of my colleagues in the California State Senate. I've known him, uh, well, we've served as colleagues for about a year and a half. But I have known him, and we've worked together for more than nine years. And I can tell you this, I can't think of a champion for in-home supportive services uh, more so than the leadership I've seen in Senator Mark Ridley-Thomas. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here and to join with my colleagues who have already made their resolve abundantly clear. It is that we have declared uh, that we will stand up uh, for those who depend on the basic services that they know not only need but indeed deserve, namely these in-home support services that constitute a lifeline. And our message to the governor couldn't be more plain. Mr. Governor, these are they who have contributed to the quality of life here in the state of California for many, many years. And at this point in their journey where they need us, we are not about to abandon them. Mr. Governor, get that message. We are not about to abandon those who need this service. Mr. Governor, get that message. We are not going to turn our backs on those who need us. Mr. Governor, get a clue. We are here. We are serious. And you ought to just understand that our resolve is unbroken. Mr. Governor, what kind of values do you have? that would cause you to think for one moment uh, that cuts of this sort are acceptable in the context of balancing a budget. Our message is plain. Our message is straightforward. Our message is value-based. It's centered on those things that we think are humane, compassionate, fiscally responsible, forward-looking, and to that extent, Mr. Governor, wake up understand that this is an issue that we will not move away from. We will stand firm just like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. We shall not be moved. That's the message that this governor has to get. Now, every single member who has spoken today has made his or her a resolve unknown. And this is more than political rhetoric that's being asserted here. This is from our hearts as well as from our heads. Mr. Governor, this is from our guts. And if you want to fight, then then bring it on because we're ready to fight on this issue and we will not turn back. Thank you very much. Our final speaker, as I mentioned, is a former leader in the uh, California State Assembly and we'll welcome her this December into the California State Senate. Please welcome Fran Pavley. One and only Fran Pavley. 
Well, I'm just pleased to be invited and included in this. When I served for six years in the State Assembly in areas mostly west of the 405, in several, several times, several occasions, there was an attempt made to cut in-home support services, and we said no every time. This is morally the wrong decision. But just importantly, it is fiscally the wrong decision. It'll cost the taxpayers of California far more to not pay, invest in this program, allowing people the dignity of staying in their own homes with providers and people they know, whether they're elderly, physically, or developmentally disabled. This is a critically important program for the state to have, and it's effective and it works and it puts people first. So I'm here just to applaud the efforts of the people in office who are going to hold the line on these devastating budget cuts. And I want to thank them all for their courage and their leadership. It's going to be a tough next month or two and collectively them and all of you letting people know don't cut here. But we also have to look at the revenue side. We need to understand the budget in its total it's going to require some tough decisions. There will be some cuts we're going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at uh, tax credits to the wealthy, or Mike Davis mentioned to the yacht tax owners. And they're going to be looking at how do we invest in the future. And so this is going to be a very challenging budget year. I'm here on the sidelines applauding their efforts. But I want to share with you also something that I find particularly uh, disturbing. I just went through an interesting um, election, um, and uh, there are actually a large amount of members of the state senate who have signed, and I received one when I was running for office, the taxpayer protection pledge, where they have refused to even consider looking at the revenue side or eliminating tax credits that aren't a priority right now in this difficult budget time. And California, as you know, is one of the three states in this country that require a two-thirds vote to pass the budget. Only California, Arkansas, and Rhode Island. So it's very challenging in Sacramento. And I again want to thank all of you for standing up and working with my uh, fellow colleagues up in Sacramento. Thanks so much. And, um, and uh, almost in closing, let me just uh, say a couple more things. It's uh, been uh, pointed out and reiterated how bad this proposal is uh, when it comes to the health care of Californians, the quality of life of uh, recipients, how bad of an economic uh, proposal this is because of the higher costs we will bear as a state and as a society and how bad of a moral uh, proposal this is. Let me just also point out for additional context here that uh, in the United States, and California is no exception, we have a population that's not only growing but aging. In the next 10 years we will see a huge influx into the retirement uh, population of the baby boomers who are eligible to retire. In-home supportive services are services where demand is going up in the future, not down. And to suggest that we make cuts into this program is to go backwards in terms of uh, those needs that we can forecast already. I want to thank again uh, Jewish, Jewish Family uh, Services of Los Angeles for hosting us today, Personal Assistance Services Council, Los Angeles County, the California Association for Adult Day Services, and the Alzheimer's Association, again, for helping organize this event. And before we wrap this session up, let me welcome another colleague from the California State Senate, uh, Senator Gil Cedillo. Gil, it's okay. time to deal. <laughs> Short and sweet, it's time to stop all the discussions about cutbacks to services for working men and women in this state. People who have spent their lives in this state, making it the great state that it is, We've got to end this discussion. We don't have a budget crisis. We have a leadership crisis. This is the eighth largest economy of the world. 200 and 
15 nations get up every day and wish they were as rich and profitable and effective and prosperous as California. Every Californian should have access to quality health care. Every child should have access to quality education. And every Californian should think that we are going to have a prosperous future after committing our lives to making this state as great as it is. It's the eighth largest economy of the world. We don't have a budget crisis. We have a leadership crisis. Let me finally point out that we're very well aware that the legislature missed a deadline this last Sunday to pass a budget. And in all likelihood, we're going to miss the uh, end of the month deadline for the governor to sign a budget. All I can say is we'd rather have a late budget than a wrong budget. And for our, um, for our final words here, let me uh, give the microphone back to Maggie. I took the microphone again, Mr. Schwarzenegger, Governor of Los Angeles and California. Please, I beg you, I beg you with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my thoughts, don't do that. Hear what all these wonderful people talk for us. I beg you and I'm asking you, stop it and don't bring your idea to affection. Thank you very much and good luck to all of you. Thank you, Maggie, thank you.